Hello everyone, this is Zaki and I am here to do a deck tech on the Turbo Empress deck that has been going around the ladder that I kind of cracked the code with this weekend or this last weekend and then um, I on my march to Cosmic went up against uh, Jeff Hoagland who then saw the deck and really liked it and picked it up and uh, played it on his stream. Um, he tweaked a couple things. Um, I've picked up some of his changes. Um, and it's kind of the deck that probably many have seen already on the ladder. But let's get into it just a little bit. So first, the namesake part, namesake card to the deck is Empress of the Ice. Um, she's part of the Maiden Cycle, where... Um, Let's see, are they all on three? No, because Poet and I believe Might Singer are on two. But they're all um, cards that make thresholds matter. They're all of a particular shard type, and then we'll have some ability of that shard type. Um, like Empress of the Ice, when you gain a Sapphire Shard, you exhaust a target troop. And then they'll all have, um, for five of that particular threshold, you get to a second effect and empress of the ices is, is to opposing cards can't ready during their opponent's ready step um so empress basically turns into this great tool against aggro decks that they try to attack in we play an empress they can't untap and we can basically stunt all of their aggression um uh she's also fairly decent tool against uh, mid-range decks. They typically have more removal, so we have to worry about that a little bit. But um, we can hold down their threats since they have pretty few number of them, generally. Um, that the exhausting it and then holding it down with the five thresholds is um, pretty, uh, pretty easy to accomplish with the rest of the part. Of the deck. So, since we're majority running to get to five Sapphire Thresholds, we're running majority Sapphire Shards. That being said, we're also running Uzu, um, the Bone Walker. Uzu, the Bone Walker, is a champion that has 23 uh, hit points, 23 health, and for four charges, you gain a threshold of our choice. We use her primarily so on turn four, we can play out a uh, Empress of the Ice and get up to the fifth threshold that we need. Then we can uh, hold down the line if we need to. Using, But we also then have some ways uh, to capitalize on that. We're going to be primarily kind of an aggro deck from there. Um, our ways to capitalize on also running Uzu and getting many th Sapphire Shards will also come into play with um, being rather aggressive, which we'll get to in a moment. But to be rather aggressive, we have to have creatures to do that with, and Dreadlings is an easy way to do that. In the Warp Steel Shard Sworn, we will be running the Dreadling Gem. I believe it is the Minor Gem of Dread, but I'm not entirely sure on that. But the Warp Steel Sworn will also uh, spawn a Depth Crawler, who will also have a gem, and since we're in Mono Sapphire, it is a 50-50 shot between whether we get the uh, Dreadling gem or the gem that gives plus one plus one on actions. Um, since that's a fairly good chance, we have a fairly good chance of also getting double Dreadling gems on it. Also, the the two bodies from one card is a fairly good thing. We also have Scattering Cultivator, um, and we have some cards to let us uh, trigger that dil diligence faster than we would normally. But it's just a good card to also spawn dreadlings. Now some of our payoff cards, we are running uh, two kind of pumping up our dreadlings with uh, Commander Prompt, who will be pumping up all of our troops. We Commander Prompt has been popping up in a lot of decks that have been using dreadlings. It, he's a fairly um, flexible card with it being shardless and the boost to attack is 
fairly significant on any time any deck that you can make multiple bodies pretty quickly um we also are using tribunal magistrate which besides it being kind of a threat on its own uh because whenever our opponent plays a non-resource card we'll put two spiderling eggs into their deck uh that will just accumulate over time there has been some unfortunate things and i do believe in one of the videos that will be following this i do kind of showcase that even though we have multiple copies of the magistrate out uh sometimes we don't they just don't draw the dreadling decks even though they're drawing or not the dreadling decks the spiderling eggs even though they're drawing many many cards uh but if we do get any spiders and dreadlings are spiders along with the uh, robot and shroomkin types the spiderlings will also be spiders spiders get uh plus one attack for each venom we control and we control we have several venom we have the cultivators from before we also will have the depth crawler that the shard sworn will spawn we have the magistrates themselves um, we'll also, uh, since we're running so much Sapphire shards, we have another payoff card in Copycat. This is kind of the first home of Copycat. Uh, it lets us, uh, Copycat, it lets us copy any of our own payoff cards, either Panda Prompt or Magistrate, or lets us put down, uh, two Empresses on the same turn. So if they say had Hero Fall, and they tapped out on the turn that we're going to play uh, Empress, they won't have a time to respond. We'll have two Empresses up, which basically is a safety net so that they can't get rid of it. Uh, this deck does have a tendency, since it has it kind of needs these payoff cards to win. It does have a tendency that if you're playing against a deck that has a ton of removal, and it can do decently with some removal, against some removal but like uh, a ton of hero falls so the mono blood takahiro deck or the vampires deck that uh jeff hoagland just uh put a video out today those type of decks this is going to have a fairly hard time if they happen to have their uh their multiple hero falls just because it eliminates the rest of our uh, payoff cards from our deck or from our hand if we have them. Copycat does allow us to, to have some protection against us to double up our, our threats. It also allows us to rescue any of our threats that have been transmogged. Uh, Transmogrified would re or transform our troop into something else. Copycat, we can always copycat our own troop. Um, which would take the form of whatever it was copycatted, or whatever it was transformed into. But copycat does say that it reverts the troop, so it'll go back to its original form, into being what we needed, hopefully an empress, or a magistrate, or what have you. Um, copycat also lets us be kind of flexible if they have a fairly good troop. Um, we can copy that if it had a lot of permanent uh buffs to it such as them having a high infinitrix and they shifted all of the powers over into something else we can copy that something else which will become the form that it was and take all of its buffs and uh, revert the troop so it doesn't have the high infinitrix buffs while we have essentially what they had before that and it lets us be rather explosive with our payoff cards just out of the blue. Uh, turn four, we've made a bunch of dreadlings, of, or set up to make a bunch of dreadlings this turn. Play commander prompt, copycat commander prompt, swing for a lot. Along with that, we have some ways to find our particular pieces. We have arcane focus, which is just kind of a good, uh, not really, it, I guess it's a cantrip. Um, but not in the traditional sense of just drawing a card. Uh, let's us look at the top two, pick one, put it in our hand. Let's us uh, kind of maintain our, uh, on turn four, we'll be able to play Empress with five shards, possibly copy it, stuff like this, pretty consistently. Um, we also get to play four Consult of the Talents or some number, 
usually three to four is what you would want to play. This deck does have some flexibility in it that you can put in your own. I ran Mad Robomancer for a while in the main deck and three consults and some other things. You you have a little bit of flexibility. The main the main portion of the deck is in Empress having Copycat and our payoff cards of at least Commander Prompt. I played for a while without the Magistrates. The Magistrates add a lot to the deck, but it, they aren't entirely necessary, but it would be good to have another threat in it um, of some kind. And Magistrate is kind of the the best one in Sapphire currently, or one of the better ones that we aren't already running in Sapphire currently. Um, Consult also doubles very well with our Shard Sworn, which I didn't have in the original version of this deck, but uh, after Jeff tinkered with it a little bit and added those cards, it worked a lot better because you could go Shard Sworn on two, and then on three, go to Consult if you didn't have anything else, because uh, that would make Consult cost three, and drawing three cards on turn three is usually a good way to make sure you consistently get two Empress on three four and have a copycat and kind of just lock them out of the game from there. I think that is the main power of the deck is just it consistently can do what it needs to. Uh, our, I don't remember if this is our final two cards in the main deck, but it is some of the flexible slots in the main deck. You have Treacherous Pass and Transmogrifade. Um, when I started playing the the deck, it had uh, four trans uh, Treacherous Passes in it. A lot more Dreadling decks were running around. Now there are a lot more mid-range decks. Transmogrifade is a better card. Transmogrifades were in the sideboard previously. Now that these are kind of your flexible slots, I believe most of the time I run one Treacherous Pass and two Transmogrifades. If there's a lot more Dreadling decks coming around, I transition more tread uh, Treacherous Passes into the main deck and transition more transmogrify fades out and if it becomes very control or uh mid-range heavy i transition more transmogrify fades in there and keep the treacherous passes into the sideboard they're both really good to have especially treacherous pass on one and then having a skittering cultivator that great draft curve um on two that is a pretty unbeatable curve in this deck and especially if you can go magistrate on three so that is something to keep in mind of one reason to also have this card in the deck. The minus one attack is good on some decks, but on others, like anything that is running uh, Crusaders, don't really care about one loss in attack. So keep that in mind. Uh, the shards that we're running, we're running most of the time, I believe, 18 sh Sapphire shards. Um, I personally like running three coins. The Sapphire uh, coins, the Sirios coins, are not quite as good as all of the rest of them. For the sole reason that you need a troop to be able to discard it and, or to cycle it. Every other one you can just do without needing anything. You, as long as you have two resources, you can cycle it. Because we need a troop on the ground, it's a little weak, so I only run three, but it is our only cycling shard. Um, but I like also running uh, Zintith's Silk. I know I'm butchering that name, but I apologize to all the Venon. Um, this is, we're running this literally as a Spiderling's Eggs uh, Sapphire Dual Shard. We don't need to have the blood threshold at all. So once we have all the th the sapphire shards, sapphire thresholds that we need, we can just make spiraling eggs with this, and it'll be perfectly fine. I run four of those. I know there are varying numbers on different people's uh, versions of the deck. Sideboard cards that we haven't already talked about because you'd already have transmogrifade and treacherous pass. Some number probably in either the main deck and the sideboard. Um, we also can take advantage since we're very heavily in. Sapphire, Frostbite, which is a great uh, card against mid-range decks that are also trying to be aggressive. So Crusader decks is a good example of those. Um, either Crusader, either Ardent or Underworld. Um, just holding down a rather big creature for two turns, basically, will be pretty good. Um, for one, resource is also better. 
and the fact that they didn't specify that it had to be two troops, that it could be up to two troops, makes it even better. Against control decks, against very heavy aggro decks, it's not quite what we need. Uh, but we have tools in our sideboard and in our main deck already to handle the very aggressive decks. So this will be coming in kind of the uh, heavy mid-range. If the control deck is running a fair number of heavy creatures, it could also be handy, but probably not. We're then also running uh, several counter spells or interrupts, I guess. Uh, I t like running halt. I know some others do not. I like having one halt at least in the sideboard. It just is a great, uh, no, you can't hero fall my particular thing. Um, but then deny, which has been, it's not quite as good as it would be in say a brown fox scout deck or anything with quick troops. You can get sometimes the, the added bonus of, uh, spiderling eggs from the magistrate coming in and, uh, discounting deny, but wouldn't count on that uh just the three mana no button basically for the time being and then also the verdict of the ancient kings which is always good against any kind of control deck and that's about it we have turbo Imp empress which has been a fantastic deck and i urge you all to at least know how to play against it if you don't want to play it but i love the deck so i would suggest playing it this has been Zakuri Chokum. I will see you all later.